I'm going to show you how masks work and how to make good ones. First, you need to understand, I guess, how they work. So I'm going to make this red layer here, this pinkish layer, and I'm going to erase it using a mask. If I click this new layer mask button, which is the second end down here on the bottom of the layers palette, it links to my pixel layer a second box, which allows me to erase or make opaque this layer. So if I paint black onto this layer with this mask selected, you can see the bottom layer, which is just this flower layer coming through. Okay, so what happens if I paint white? Well, obviously my image comes back. So this is all a mask is. It's just a complicated way to erase in a layer and to bring it back without losing any data. See, cause, because it, normally if I just use the erase tool, I would have completely lost those pixels. But now, because I'm just applying it using this mask, I can paint back in my top red layer. So I'm going to delete this and show you how to make a good mask. Step one is always delete, uh, duplicate this background layer. I now have a second version of my image that I'm working on that I'm going to use to make my mask. What I want to do is I want to separate these flowers, these purple flowers, from this green background. And I'm going to use this as a mask so that I can then um, apply filters to my flowers and to the grass separately. So to do this, I first need to just take into consideration what colors I'm working with. Well, these, these flowers here are purple, which is a mix of red and blue, and my background is green, which is just green in an RGB image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a channels palette, a black and white channels, channels palette, which has white for the flowers and black for the grass, which, if turned into a mask, will give me... Um, We'll, we'll separate out those, those flowers in, the, in that grass. It's easiest to show it, so first things first, start with the channel mixer on your second layer. Convert it to monochrome, and we want, uh, we can either make our flowers black and our grass white to separate them, or we can make our flowers white and our, background, uh, and our grass black. Because the grass is just green, I'm going to send that to zero, which will make it go to black. And because these flowers, which are kind of an indigo, or a lot of blue and a bit of red, if I have a fairly high value for blue and a, and a decent value for red, you can see these flowers, these purple flowers, have turned white. And that's good enough. Uh, we're going to want these to be solid white and the background to be solid black, but we're not quite there yet. So, I'm oopsie, I'm going to paint that, that black, that little splotch which came up white and I'm going to open the levels palette control L is my shortcut and you can see if I drag the side in I get more black and if I drag this over I'm brightening up those flowers so I'm gonna drag this um, extreme slider over and then I'm gonna drag my middle point over a bit too there are two tools here that are really useful one is dodge one is burn dodge lightens things so if you dodge the highlights we would be making these fairly white values even more white so you can see, or maybe you can't, that these flowers are becoming a little more white there. And if we burn the black, burn these values that are already fairly dark, we can get rid of some of that extra detail in the background that would otherwise interfere. It doesn't have to be too perfect because the channel is based on the image and it's going to do a fairly good job of staying true to the pixels that we had originally. Okay, so now we've got this black and white image which we don't know what to do with. If you click over here on the channels palette, a channel is a, it, it allows you to separate out um, pixels based on brightness values. So if I control click on one of these channels, even my RGB value here, because they're all the same, I now have a selection. You can see in my history palette here, I've got load selection. So what it's done is it's given me this, these white and this gray and this black as, as an alpha channel. Um, which I can then use as a mask. I'm going to deselect it first though. I'm going to duplicate again my background layer, which I'm going to apply this as a mask to. Okay, so confusing? Yes, but we'll, we'll get through it. With my uh, black and white image selected, I'm going to control click in the channels palette, loading it as a selection. 
I'm then going to click on this real pixel ver a layer, if I hide this top one, that I want to apply, apply it to as, as a mask. You can see I've got my marching ants around my flowers, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm now going to click the Make New Lask Mask button, and my mask is applied. I can throw away that top layer, which was only there just to give me um, the, the mask shape that I wanted. Well, now I can do all sorts of f silly things with my flowers alone, because they're the only ones selected on this layer. So, I, f for instance, if I go Saturation 0 or Saturation Extreme, you can see that they go... they shuffle between um, gray values and etc. <laughs> and if I drag the hue around, you can see I can change their color. So now I've got pink flowers. Um, if I duplicate this background layer again, and you can see I've got my channels palette here again, I'm going to control click on my mask, and I'm going to apply that same mask by clicking new mask with that selection um, on this other layer, and I'm going to invert it. I go just go Control I, and if I Alt click it, you can see what what the mask looks like by itself. Alt click again brings you back to normal. Um, now I can apply things to my grass by themselves because grass is in this white area. So go Q, uh, let's say hue and saturation. Oh, it won't let me open it. Don't know what's going on. Oh, I had my mask selected. You have to make sure your image is selected. And then I can make my grass whatever color I want. Or, more realistically, I can just do a, a very crude saturation increase. And you can see, if I base it, if I look back at my original image, I've totally changed stuff around. So, this allows you to separate different par parts of your image into different sections and work with them separately. Um, and have really good, oopsie, going full screen here, that's not going to work, and having really good uh, separation lines here that aren't, you know, painted in by hand meticulously. Um, that's it. It is complicated. It is hard to follow. I realize this isn't a great tutorial, but live with it. Ha ha.